blood flow through vessels is defined by the same factors that affect blood flow through pipes, which is based on Poiseuille's law, a derivative of Ohm's law. The main components to consider are the pressure gradient and the resistance which determine blood flow. You must have a pressure gradient which is high pressure to low pressure for flow to occur. Resistance is the obstruction to flow where vessel diameter plays the greatest role. The arterial pressure is the highest at the proximal aorta receiving the peak ejection pressure from the heart. The systolic blood pressure, which is the larger number, is the peak pressure developed by the heart to tr propel the blood forward. The diastolic blood pressure, or smaller number, is the pressure in the aorta at the time the left ventricle begins ejecting blood out. Because blood is pulsatile and not steady, it is difficult to know what blood pressure value to use in some hemodynamic equations. The mean arterial pressure is a calculation of average blood pressure over a complete beat. The value is not in the middle between systolic and diastolic, but lower as the cardiac cycle spends more time in diastole or filling than it does in systole or ejection. So the value of the mean arterial pressure is lower than one would expect. It is the pulse pressure or difference between systolic and diastolic pressure divided by three then added to diastolic pressure. For a person with a blood pressure of 110 over 80, the mean arterial pressure is 110 minus 80 divided by three plus 80, which is 90 millimeters of mercury. The pressure gradient for blood is the difference between the high pressure at the start or arterial pressure and the lower pressure at the end of the vessel segment you're looking at. Arterial pressure is the blood pressure. Ideally, its peak is 120 millimeters of mercury to impart momentum to the blood leaving the heart and drops to a low of 80 millimeters of mercury to maintain forward flow between beats. By the time the blood gets to the capillary beds, the pressure has dropped to 35 to 25 millimeters of mercury. In order to get the blood to drain from the capillary beds and move to the right atrium, the pressure must drop even more until it reaches an average of zero millimeters of mercury at the entrance of the heart. The pressure gradient drives the blood forward. Resistance is the term for all the things that can impede flow. The modifiable factors affecting resistance and therefore how much the heart has to push the blood to overcome resistance are radius and viscosity. By far the most important and variable one is the radius. Because the radius affects resistance by a factor of four, even a small change in the radius of a vessel has a profound impact on the flow through that vessel. Just reducing the radius by 20% cuts the flow by more than half. In our bodies, when vessels constrict, the heart must increase the pressure it ejects blood to avoid such a reduction in blood flow. Patients with high blood pressure or hypertension are treated with medications to minimize the vasoconstriction and minimize the resistance so that the heart can push blood out at much lower pressures, thereby reducing blood pressure and the amount of work that the heart has to do. Viscosity of blood can affect resistance when a person has too many red blood cells called polycythemia, which can occur at high altitude or certain pharmacological agents. The increased presence of red blood cells can make the blood thicker and harder to move. Blood flow through vessels can be laminar, streamlined like, like a bullet, or turbulent. Turbulence is created anytime there is a change from a straight pipe, like when a vessel bifurcates or divides. Pathologically, plaque builds up on the vessel wall can create turbulence which further contributes to more plaque buildup. The turbulence created by vessel bifurcation can be seen in this video. The whole point of blood flow to the body is to deliver nutrients and oxygen to our cells and pick up any waste generated from our cells and tissues. This exchange takes place in the capillary beds throughout our body. The delivery of blood to the capillary is called tissue perfusion. It has already been pointed out that the blood pressure or pressure gradient and vessel dilation or resistance are determinants of the delivery of blood to the capillary beds. Within the tiny arterioles and capillaries there are other factors that also play a role. The local effects include the ability to dilate or constrict 
under conditions of trauma, reduced oxygen levels, or changing temperature as during exercise, etc. The autonomic nervous system is also a major controller of tissue perfusion through the sympathetic or parasympathetic pathways. There are a number of hormones that have effects on the blood pressure and blood volume. The baroreflex, where baro means pressure, is a mechanism to maintain adequate blood flow to the brain. The pressure sensors for this reflex is located in the bifurcation of the carotid artery, called the carotid sinus, right below the jawline. When blood pressure is high, the baroreflex utilizes the parasympathetic nervous system to try to lower the pressure by reducing heart rate, dilating blood vessels in the lower body, etc. If you push on or massage the carotid bifurcation area on both sides of the neck simultaneously, you can trick the baroreceptors located there into lowering the heart rate because those sensors are detecting high pressure. The baroreceptors are only pressure sensors, so they cannot discriminate whether the pressure comes from the blood inside or you pushing from the outside. When you stand up quickly and feel lightheaded, the lightheadedness is the effects of low blood pressure to the brain. Those baroreceptors detect the low pressure. The baroreceptor will elicit cardiovascular changes to increase heart rate and lower body vasoconstriction via the sympathetic nervous system to increase blood pressure to normal levels and you will no longer feel lightheaded. Blood flow is also affected by endocrine mechanisms. These mechanisms are more long term because they are the hormones that affect the heart, blood, vessels, and kidneys. Antidiuretic hormone comes from the posterior pituitary targeting the kidney to retain more water and sodium, thereby increasing blood volume. Angiotensin II is a potent hormone that increases blood pressure. Angio is a term that refers to vessels, and think of tensin as being tense or constricted. Angiotensin II is made of a series of chemical conversions starting with the kidney releasing renin. It has a multitude of effects that work together to dramatically increase blood pressure. These effects include vasoconstriction, thirst to increase volume, and force of contraction by the heart. It also stimulates the release of another hormone called aldosterone. Aldosterone increases blood volume similar to antidiuretic hormone from the posterior pituitary gland. Aldosterone is from the adrenal cortex, the zona glomerulosa region. Atrial natriuretic peptide comes from the right atrium as one of the only hormones that will decrease blood pressure. It is released when the right atrium is stretched out due to too much volume. Atrial natriuretic peptide causes vasodilation to lower pressure and targets the kidney to release more water, which decreases blood volume, also known as diuresis. The renin angiotensin system is a very effective mechanism to increase blood pressure throughout the body. It is triggered by low perfusion pressure in the kidneys. The kidney responds by releasing renin into the circulation. Renin then combines with angiotensinogen, which is always circulating in the blood. This combination creates angiotensin, also known as angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2 by an enzyme known as angiotensin converting enzyme, which is known as ACE, and it's found in the endothelium or tunica intima, mostly in the lungs. The blood pressure drugs called ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers or ARBs target this mechanism to reduce blood pressure in hypertensive patients. Angiotensin II increases blood pressure in two ways. It does so by targeting the tunica media of arterioles to cause constriction and stimulate the release of aldosterone from the adrenal gland. So angiotensin II directly increases pressure by vasoconstriction and indirectly by the actions of aldosterone increasing blood volume.